I said you would join again. Why, thank you. We missed you. Here, my well, thank you. for today. What is Argentina? That's not it. Oh, all right. Alexa, stop. It's what you got to do to keep yourself sane here. But thank you so much for those of you that are returning. I The feedback was just so wonderful. Text messages, the comments, they really mean a lot. And for those of you that are new, hi, my name's Katie. And we're here just to have a little chat in this really odd, strange, isolated time that we're living in. What I really encourage is for you to get involved in the comments below. You know, do all those things that YouTubers say you're supposed to do. See, I, I don't even know what I'm looking at the wrong place. I'll get it together at some point, I promise. All those things that YouTubers say, subscribe, like, notifications, blah -de blah Comment down below for things that you're thinking, things maybe you don't agree with, because this is just a platform for conversation, sometimes contentious conversation. I think we see in the world now that we have to enter into territories that maybe we have just shied away from in the past. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on the H of human. Human is spelled H-U-M-A-N-N. -N. There's a reason that it's misspelled. I address it in the previous video. Now, I have sat down probably 20 million times to try to film this already. Cue to all the previous videos. Okay. Um. Have, why can I think? It was such a challenge, and I really do believe that sometimes when you're facing a resistance like that, that means that something important is supposed to come out. It's ironic that we're speaking about just H today, the honoring of our community, because I think if we look out into our, our large communities, we may not be so proud throughout this quarantine, throughout this lockdown, this time of social injustice, or honestly, that's been going on for centuries, but the beautiful silver lining of what's occurring right now is the world has paused. We have been forced to stop and look at what's going on and make the change, take the actionable steps to be able to move forward in a more positive sense. Here we are, let's see what we can do. Human, very simple principles. We are now part of a new community. We're creating new networks to allow us different perspectives, expand our knowledge, change our points of view. That is what life is about. You don't wanna be the same person that you were five years ago. We're continually evolving and growing. I hope that you guys will join along on this journey with me. Let me just break it down as to how we do it in the series. The first question that I ask the group, usually I'm dealing with young dancers or young industry professionals. It's catered to a very specific market. However, this carries over into whatever community you're a part of. The first thing that we need to do is assess who makes up that community. If I ask a young dancer, who is your community? They usually say my fellow dancers, my dance teachers, and maybe the parents. They write out those things and then I challenge them to kind of widen their perspective. Who else makes that reality function? They'll sit with it for a second and then they'll think, okay, the people working behind the front desk, the people that take the money, the people that sort the schedules, the people that come in and clean the studio, the people that come in and do repairs, the people that work with the audio equipment, the visual equipment, the people that work on costumes, the dads that work on the props. It goes on and on and on. And again, this can cater to any workspace that you're within. The second question that we dive into after we've established what our community is, is how does that community look to you? What are the things that you feel about that community? And oftentimes there are qualities that we will bring forward as much as there are things we appreciate, there are things that we wish would be a little bit different. And sometimes we'll just sit back into that and be like, yeah, that's that's the way that it is. I wish it were different, but que sera, sera. However, I think our responsibility is to understand our power and the actions that we take, how they can impact those around us and the ripple effect that happens. We have our own personal internal community, which all of us are living in. In right now we have the great opportunity to really examine all of the things going on within us it can drive us a little crazy at times i know sitting alone in isolation just amplifies all of the things about us that we need to be thinking about or should i be feeling this or should i be educating myself more or should i be watching more news or should i not be listening to the news or should i listen to more podcasts or what are the things that have been my blind spots? And all of these questions are normal. And I think for us to realize that everybody's kind of going through something similar allows us to have a more positive community. That's the ultimate goal. With us taking the time to examine our internal community only honors our external communities. Those only build and build and build. And the beautiful thing about that is seeing the amount of power that we have, that ripple effect 
will ultimately grow out to things that seem so out of reach like our ability to go and vote, our ability to go to a protest, our ability to read a book that's going to educate us and then ultimately maybe have a conversation with someone else that will educate them and then just build that continual wave of positive energy. That's really what this is about. We have our internal community. We step out into our next community, which is usually our family, our loved ones, our most intimate community. Those are the people that have the most impact on the way we speak, the way we think, what our views are. So we need to be very discerning about the people that we allow and they're going to have such an influence on our character. And then our communities expand from there into our workspace, into our city, into our state, into our nation, and you know, however we feel about our nation right now. We see, I mean, it is right in front of our face how incredibly divisive it is, how incredibly polarizing it is. Someone else's background is going to constitute what their reality is, what their truth is. So we can't negate that that is true to them. And this is a beautiful time for us to really go, okay, what I think life should look like or what I think life looks like is not how it is for anyone else. Really basic, simple principles, but expand into something so much larger. This is really a conversation that I'll wanna split up into maybe a couple videos where I can bring in some of my peers and talk to them about what community means to them how they choose to enter into a network, if they're going on to a job, how do they find the most success? I have been very fortunate in my career to work with incredible artists, incredible teams, and I think most teams agree that you don't do anything on your own. You have to have a group of people that you respect, you can delegate tasks and trust them to do what they do best. In order to do that, we have to have an understanding and respect for every single person's position. For example, I have helped to put together a tour for Jennifer Lopez, and many of those dancers were very seasoned and were around long enough to understand that when they would step on the stage that was built for rehearsals for them, they knew that a whole production crew worked throughout the entire night to make sure that was ready for their rehearsal, that an audiovisual team had worked over music edits, lighting cues, and video content cues for hours on end prior to them showing up. You have a whole wardrobe team that's doing alterations. It goes on and on and on to the amount of people that are working to make your reality possible. It takes that knowledge, it takes that maturity. Again, very simple ideas. This is something that we can carry into our regular lives right now. I think that's again why this was such a challenge for me to video. I wanted to be sure that I was being sensitive to the subjects that we're looking at right now. This is a time in life where I think that we are poised for change. We have stopped and we are forced to look at things that we wanted to maybe pretend didn't exist but they do, and so it's our job to educate ourselves. I am such a believer in the idea that those in glass houses should not throw stones. I am saying these things to be able to get feedback from you as well. This is a cyclical conversation because I know I have said things or taken action that has disempowered people or made people feel disrespected, and that was never my intention. However, the action I took made them feel that way, and I have to own that. I will link some things below that I've been listening to or reading as of late that have helped me to open up my view, even though that's another thing where we have to check back in with ourselves. I'm so hungry right now, and we're like, I'll listen to this podcast, and I'll watch this documentary, and I'll read this biography, and it's so much information, and you get to the point where you're like, okay, I need to take a step back, I need to just breathe. Again, we have to get right with ourselves first. That's a continual process. We're never gonna reach some place where it's like, I got it all figured out. I think we all see here that we are just learning as we go. That's what this conversation is all about. This is the very simple principle of honoring our community and what H stands for. But as you can see, it can open up to such a large conversation and a continual conversation. I hope that you will join in. I would love to hear what you have to say. It will keep me occupied in these times where I'm just hanging out with her. Miss Alexa over there. I'm gonna say her name too loud because she always likes to pipe in. Yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed. I'm excited to see where this goes and I hope to see you next time.